Let's look at the most iconic question in this course. Why did William win the Battle of Hastings? On the 14th of October, the Battle of Hastings was fought between Harold Godwinson's army and William, Duke of Normandy's army. William won, marking the beginning of the Norman conquest of Anglo-Saxon England. What was key to William's victory? Would William have won if Harold's men hadn't just fought at Gate Fulford, where they lost, and Stamford Bridge, where they won? What if the wind hadn't changed? What if the Normans hadn't used the strategy of feigned retreat? Why did William win the Battle of Hastings? Well, there's three main branches of this question. The first is the Normans' tactical strengths. So let's look at the role of the Normans' tactical strengths in William's victory. Well, the attack was well planned. When the Normans landed at Pevensey Bay on the 28th of September 1066, they brought with them a prefabricated castle. This was used to prevent the Norman army from being attacked while they waited for Harold to come to battle. Whilst waiting for Harold to face them in battle, William ordered his soldiers to pillage the southern coastal villages. Now, here you could use a developed explanation because this had two positive consequences for the Normans. Firstly, they um, were able to collect supplies from the pillaged villagers. Secondly, they were able to goad Harold into open battle. This was in their favour. They wanted to fight sooner to avoid running out of supplies and avoid outbreaks of diseases. The Normans also had strong trained military. So this involved mounted cavalry. The knights, the mounted cavalry, were a tremendous weapon in battle. They had the capacity to destroy the Anglo-Saxon shield wall and moreover, when the shield wall broke, they could chase men down the hill and kill numerous men in quick succession. The Norman or army also had trained infantry who could exploit gaps in the shield wall and were often well equipped with swords. Finally, the Norman army had archers. These could weaken the shield wall using a volley of arrows. The Normans also used the tactic of feigned retreat during the battle. This was very important. It proved a turning point in the battle as it tricked Harold's feared to come off Senlac Hill and lose this advantageous position as they chase the Normans down the hill. Also, and very importantly, the Normans fought under the cross banner. The cross banner was like a flag that had been blessed by the Pope, who was Alexander II. This meant the church had given William the support, um, their support for the battle, which meant the people fighting under William, the Normans, thought God was on their side and that they would automatically go to heaven if they were killed in battle. This encouraged them to fight bravely. And William had done very well to convince Alexander II to bless the Normans in battle. Another factor that was key in the Norman victory at Hastings was the role of chance or luck. William was very fortunate that when he originally intended to sail 
to England in early August, the wind was blowing in the wrong direction. If he had been able to set sail in August, he would have had to face the full strength of the Anglo-Saxon navy and a fresh, numerically superior Anglo-Saxon army, who would not have been exhausted and depleting by depleted by fighting hard rada. When the wind did change in late September, it was far more favourable to William. Harold, by this point, had lost thousands of soldiers fighting at Gate Forford and Stamford Bridge, and the Anglo-Saxon army was up north, allowing William to land in the south unopposed. So that was very fortunate. Indeed, in most years in September, the English Channel would normally have been too rough to allow an invasion. In contrast, Harold was very unfortunate and unlucky. He was very unlucky to have to fight so many battles in quick succession. In just a month, his men had been defeated at the Battle of Forfur Gate. They then had achieved victory at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. But both of these battles had weakened the Anglo-Saxon army. They had lost men, they had gained injuries, they had used supplies, and they were placed in the wrong part of England geographically for when William invaded in October. So that was very unfortunate. Another factor point for the Norman victory at Hastings were the Anglo-Saxon tactical weaknesses and Harold's mistakes. So let's look at these. On hearing about William's landing and pillaging of southern coastal villages, Harold decided to march his men straight from the Battle of Stamford Bridge to Hastings. This was a poor decision and against the advice of Harold's brother, Griff, that's G-Y-R-T-H. His brother argued that Harold should have stayed in the strongly defended London and avoided open battle with the Normans until spring 1067. But Harold ignored his brother's advice, didn't stay in London, and continued marching his men south. It took two weeks for his men to march from the Battle of Stamford Bridge to Hastings, and the consequences of this was disastrous. When Harold's men got to Hastings, they were tired. Harold had been forced to leave many injured soldiers behind in York. The decision to go straight to Hastings had been a quick one, making it difficult for other earls to organise their thanes and local feud to join Harold at Hastings. And if Harold had waited in London, his army would have been able to grow, become larger, fresher. And if he had waited until spring, as his brother suggested, William's army would have been likely to succumb to disease and starvation. But because of Harold's decision to march straight to Hastings, Harold's army were exhausted and outnumbered by the Norman army by about 6,000 to 7,500 men. Another weakness of Harold's army were their experience, training and equipment. William's army had knights, infantry and archers. Harold's army did not have this level of experience. They had the feared, which were largely untrained. They had javelin throwers and housecarls, 
who fought with axes. The house calls were the most experienced. Indeed, the vast majority of Harold's army were the feared, many of whom arrived simply with the knives from their kitchens to fight with. Maybe because the Anglo-Saxon army were exhausted. Maybe because they weren't well trained enough. They made a vital mistake in the middle of the battle. And that was to break their shield wall, which was their greatest defensive advantage on the top of Senlac Hill, and fall for the Norman tactic of the feigned retreat. This sealed the deal and lost them the Battle of Hastings. So these are the reasons why William won the Battle of Hastings.